Can you imagine what would happen to men if once a month they started bleeding from their penis? The world would shut down. The world would shut down. They would freak out. They would be hysterical. They would be crying. They'd be screaming. Like if all of a sudden the amount of blood that comes out of me started coming out of the CEO of your favorite First National Bank, all period products would be free. They would be accessible everywhere. We'd accommodate. We do all these things. And I just think it's the simplest solution ever, which is that you stop hiding the fact that you have a period. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the show and this has nothing to do with today's episode but I noticed something interesting and I feel like maybe you experience this in your own life. When I got my new journal, if you have, if you're not familiar with this about me, I always, always, always have a journal. I have carried a journal and written in a journal for probably 15 years and whenever I get a new journal I mark at the beginning where it starts this one started September 21st of 2022 I use my journal to journal I use my journal to lay out my podcast episodes um, write ideas do my results list like what am I looking to achieve this week at work like everything is in the journal and when I was picking out my new journal, I wanted to choose a color that meant something to me. And the last time I had a journal, I chose green because in that particular season, I was really going through a lot of grief. And I read somewhere or maybe saw in a video that whatever chakra you want to work on, that you pull the color of that chakra into your life. You wear it in clothing, you, you know, would choose a journal for that or maybe jewelry. And so at the time I chose green, which is the color of the heart chakra. And it was just a reminder, sort of a signal to me to always come back to that place of love, to try and do things that were heart opening. And it, I found it really helpful, just maybe something to try if you haven't ever considered it before. I started learning about chakras when I started doing yoga a couple of years ago. There's a ton of information on the internet about it, but each sort of energy source in our body has a different color associated with it. So the last time I chose green, this time I was like, what color do I need? And I chose red, which is the root chakra. So it's all about feeling grounded, feeling centered, there's a calmness in that. There's um, just like a substance in that that I really felt like I needed to focus on this season. And I couldn't have understood how much that was going to come into play. I couldn't have foreseen how much my whole family was really going to be tossed inside a stormy sea and that we really were going to need that sense of grounding. So I chose the red journal and then I ended up choosing a red phone cover. And what I just realized, I, I went to look at, we have a, a website or that doesn't make sense. We have, um, we have software where we store all of our videos. So whenever I'm done with a podcast video, I upload it and then my editor will edit it. And what I just noticed is how much red I have been wearing in videos. So I feel like this color is weaving its way into my life in every aspect. But I have to tell you, it's a simple trick, but it just, it really works for me. It really reminds me like, oh yeah, we're grounded, we're centered, we're here, we're safe. Be present where your feet are. God's got you. The universe has you. Like you are okay. There's something about this that really helps me. And I just thought I'd mention it in case any of you need that today. Now that I am dressed like Elliot from ET, let's talk about today's episode. Today's episode is brought to you by a weird interaction I had. <laughs> it's not even weird. It's not weird. It's 
I had this moment, I had this interaction with someone, which I'll tell you about in a minute, that made me really question a lot of things and then made me aware of something that I used to put up with that I refuse to put up with now. And I was like, oh, dang, that's a good podcast episode. Six things I refuse to put up with anymore. And frankly, six things that I think you should also refuse to put up with. And you've probably got a whole bunch that you can add to the list yourself. I thought if I gave you my things that I won't put up with, that perhaps it would encourage you to start digging a little deeper And see if there are any areas in your life where you probably need to stand up for yourself or you need to hold some boundaries in place or where you just need to understand how screwed up our psychology is and how you were given information as a child or how you were taught things by society that became your normal that you should absolutely not accept and Honestly, this list could be 1,000 points long, but for today's purposes, I tried to stick with a handful of things that maybe you're not already thinking about. So let us begin. Six things you should never put up with. Number one, someone yucking your yum. Someone said this to me recently. We were talking about having children and he said, oh, we teach our kids, don't yuck someone's yum. And now you could say that in a lot of ways. You could be like, don't crap all over the things that people like. Don't don't be rude when someone says that they're really into something and you sort of immediately jump to why you don't like it too. But I just love this saying, don't yuck their yum. Don't yuck my yum. We do this. I am guilty of this. Someone will say that they're really into something and I will viscerally (laughs) dislike the thing that they just said they loved. And so my immediate response is like, disgusting. I hate oysters. Like so gross. Like the texture I can't or like scallops. Like why do I do that? Why do we do that? Why do we, someone literally just said like a joyful thing, right? They just said something that they were into and then there's just this thing where maybe if you're not conscious of it, you will immediately come back with why you don't like the thing they just said they liked. We should not put up with ourselves doing this to others and we shouldn't put up with others doing this to us. If you dig something, you get to dig it because it's your thing. You get to like that specific thing. You don't have to like what other people like. They don't have to be into what you're into. In fact, the world would be incredibly boring if we all liked the same stuff. Don't allow someone to crap all over the thing that you just said you were into. It's, it seems, I wanted to include this right at the top because it seems really innocuous. It seems like it's not that big a deal, right? You're dating someone new and you're like, oh, I, I love to read. And they're like, reading? Oh my God, I couldn't finish a book if my life depended on it. Or like, who has time for that? Or I've tried, but like reading's so boring. Like, I just don't get it. Yes, maybe that's their insecurity. Maybe that's, you know, something else you don't know what it is, or maybe it's just a red flag you need to pay attention to anyone who comes hardcore over the top with disliking a thing that you love is suspect. It's just real suspect. Because honestly, someone being into a band, a singer, an activity, a food, a vacation, a style of clothing, someone being into that has nothing to do with you. And we live in a society, we live in a culture that loves to comment. Man, people love to comment and they love to comment mostly when they disagree with you. But in, and it's bad enough when it happens in social media or on the internet, 
But in real life, I do think that you should be really conscious of anyone in your life who goes out of their way to point out how they definitely don't like the thing you like. Maybe you hear that and you're like, what is the big deal? Who cares? They're just, they have an opinion and they're just telling me their opinion. Yes and no. In my experience, the people who go out of their way to continuously point out things that you're into that they're not into, they do it as a form of control and manipulation. It starts out very subtly and it grows and grows and grows. If you sort of fall for it once or if you, here's a perfect example. You're dating someone new and you're at a restaurant and you're like, oh my gosh, let's use oysters. That's a great, I love oysters. They're my favorite. And, and you're, you're pumped because you're at a seafood restaurant and you're about to order the oysters. And they're like, oh my, what? It's like, I don't get this at all. It's so expensive. It's basically slime in a shell. Like I'm actually describing how I feel about oysters. Um, it's they're all of these things. They have all these opinions. And then you change your behavior based on how strongly they reacted to that thing. So you're like, oh, okay. Like I, I'll sure let's let's share the fish and chips. Like you change your behavior based on what they said. They just learned that they could control you by making you think that your idea wasn't accepted or supported. This happens to us when we're little. It happens to us in relationships all the time. It's why you get out of a long-term relationship and realize that you've lost pieces of yourself because you just kept denying them. Every time that person was like, I don't like this. I don't get this. I don't want to do it. And you, oh, okay, okay, well, let's do your thing. Let's do your thing. You keep sort of chipping off pieces of yourself to accommodate. It seems small and little, but it adds up. And all of a sudden it adds up to you find yourself in a relationship and you're not who you were. You're who they want you to be. So just be mindful of this. You can like things that are different than your partner and still have, in fact, probably have a more healthy relationship. It's okay. It's normal. What's not normal is someone who expects you to do things just like they do them. So don't put up with someone yucking your yum. All right, we're going to go in a totally, completely opposite direction, but this is important. The second thing you should not put up with, if you are a person who bleeds, okay, you get a period, your uterus does things, right? Stuff comes out of you. If you are a person who bleeds, do not put up with hiding the fact that you have a period in any way. Now, I'm not talking about rolling around in the streets, doing a free bleed, just letting it all, letting it all go. I mean, I guess if that's your thing, do your thing. I'm not saying that you, you know, just throw bloody pads on the floor for everyone to, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that it is 2023. Over half of the world's population will bleed because of menses at some point in their life. And yet, we still hide every part of it. You, you know, you got to go to the bathroom on an airplane. You got to go to the bathroom at a restaurant, whatever. And you smuggle the tampon or the pad or whatever it is that you've got. You smuggle it on your person like you're a drug mule. Like you're trying to hide, not get caught by TSA as you're bringing a knife back across the border. Like what are we doing? Why do we hide the fact that we have a period? Now, here is the interaction that gave me the whole idea for this podcast. I was talking to a guy. I don't remember who. I was talking to a guy and I was saying, I just was talking about my period, which I do. I don't care who you are, man, woman, child, anybody. If it, 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 to me, it should be so normal. Why did I have to learn in middle school, in sex ed about 
the penis and the testes and like that boys might get a hard on during class and like nighttime emissions and like how much stuff have I been required to learn about men and this totally natural normal thing that we all do we gotta hide so I don't care who I'm talking to I'll just like talk about hormones I'll talk about my period or whatever and I started talking about it and he kind of looked at me funny and I just kept talking about it and I said something about my teenage boys and I'm like oh you know my boys have always known like they know when I'm on my period they know what a period is they know hormones they know that you know I get my period around the full moon and close to the full moon. They probably shouldn't start stuff with me because my ability to hold my anger in is <laughs> is diminished. I was just saying all this stuff to him and I could see him like tripping out that I was telling him that my teenage boys are aware of when I'm on my period or like what's going And I was like, this is crazy. I didn't say it to him, but I thought it. It's crazy that everyone isn't normalizing periods for the next generation. If you are raising boys, you need to make them aware that this happens, that it happens to you if you are a bleeder, if you're not a bleeder, that it happens to other people you know, that it happens to their friends. I've talked to my boys about what to do if any of their friends at school accidentally start their period and, you know, it comes through on their pants. I'm like, give them your sweatshirt, give them whatever, like help them cover for them. It can be so scary when that happens to you. So like be a mensch in that moment and show up for them the way that they need you to. We've had so like they're not weirded out by that. They're being raised by a mom like I'm. It really trips me out. And I understand culturally things are different in different cultures and societies. But what, like why? If you are having your period, it is your body doing what it is supposed to do. It is a sign of a healthy body that you are bleeding once a month, that all of these things are happening to you. That should be normalized. It should be normalized on every level. We're not there yet. But in the meantime, I think the fastest way to that reality is that we need to be more public about it. We should just talk about it. Not 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 like to random people at the grocery store, but like why would we why would this be secret? I have a partner who was raised by a single mother and has a younger sister. And so he was the only boy in his house growing up. And when we first met, you know, you're dating someone new and it's like, you know, we're trying to be cute and trying to whatever. And his attitude around hormones, periods, all of it was such a revelation to me because I had never met a man for whom it was so normal. Like he didn't, I remember early on in our relationship, I was having really bad cramps. And you know, it was like early and I kind of didn't, I wasn't as adamant in talking about it as I am now. So back then, I like didn't want to say I was having cramps and he was like, are you okay? You seem a little off. And I was like, honestly, I'm, I'm having pretty bad cramps today. And he was like, oh, darling, like he was so kind and considerate. And can I do this for you? Can I do like he just it was so wild because I had never experienced that before. And it is the difference of someone who grows up and is used to that and someone who doesn't. Like, can you imagine what would happen to men If once a month they started bleeding from their penis, the world would shut down. The world would shut down. They would freak out. They would be hysterical. They would be crying. They'd be screaming. Like if all of a sudden the amount of blood that comes out of me started coming out of the CEO of your favorite first national bank, like that dude goes into the bathroom and all of a sudden he's 
gushing blood. He has cramps in his penis. He has cramps in his butthole. He has cramps in his in, in his chest, in his stomach, all the things. If men had to deal with a fraction of what we have to deal with, it would be so normal. All period products would be free. They would be accessible everywhere. We'd accommodate. We do all these things. And I just think it's the simplest solution ever, which is that you stop hiding the fact that you have a period. Just talk about it. If you don't feel good today, someone's like, how are you? Like, I'm okay. I'm a little hormonal. I'm okay, but I'm having some cramps. Uh, you know, I'm feeling this way. I have a headache. You know, like, just be honest. Be honest about what's going on, especially if you are raising kids. No matter what they are, boy, girl, like, it doesn't matter. Let's normalize this conversation because any time... <laughs> that half of the world's population does something, it shouldn't be a secret. Don't put up with it anymore. Just be honest. Yeah. And if you have, let's say you have a teenage boy and you're like, Rach, I have never talked to them about this before. Fantastic. It's a great time to do so. I, I, I have, um, one of my teenagers was talking about one of his friends who was a girl. And... He was like, oh, she's like, you know, she was, it was like, she was really weird this week. And I feel like she just kept getting mad at me for no reason and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, maybe it's this, maybe it's this, maybe it's this. Also, buddy, you know, hormones are wild. And because she's a teenage girl, her hormones are going to be even more intense. Like I sort of walked him through that reality because I want them to have compassion for other people. We're, we're not victims we're fine we're killing it women are strong we are powerful we are capable of anything but let's normalize the fact that we do all this shit and we do it with hormones raging and we do it with not feeling well and we do it with sometimes bleeding through our clothes and we do it in all of these different ways that our counterparts don't have to deal with so if that's true let's just talk about it just going to slide my soapbox over and be done with that conversation. The third thing you should never put up with. Now we're going to get into some like, I know you guys love, you love a little personal development talk. You love some motivation. So I've got some for you. You gave me a chance to talk about periods. Now let's talk about some motivation. <laughs> the third thing that you should never put up with. <sighs> I debated writing this one down, but it is true. It is my truth. And so I'm going to share it. And not everyone is going to like this and not everyone is going to agree that you shouldn't put up with it. But this is what is true for me. The third thing that you should never put up with is consistent mediocrity. Consistent mediocrity. Now, when I first made this list, I actually wrote just mediocrity, which I looked up the definition because I was like, I want to be able to tell them exactly what this means and what I mean by making this statement. Mediocre means only of moderate quality, not very good. That's what it means to be mediocre. Not very good. Not even close to great. Not even good. It's not very good. So at first I wrote, you shouldn't put up with mediocrity. But then I realized there are times in my life, your life, everyone's life, where you are giving all you are capable of giving in that particular season, on that day, in that week, in that year, based on what's going on with you, emotionally, physically, financially, relationally, spiritually, like there's so many reasons why we might not be able to give the best we can give. Now, we have established that there are times where for extenuating reasons, you're not able to give your best. But let's shove that to the side for a second. We've established it, that's, that's done. Let's say that you are not in a season 
where you have a reason. Let's say there's nothing really going on with you spiritually, emotionally, physically, mentally. Like I'm just talking about you living your life and everything's going the way that it should, the way that it does. But you know in your heart of hearts, you're not fully showing up. You're not fully showing up as the parent you know you can be. You're not fully showing up as the leader you know you can be. You're not putting all the effort that you can into your work. You're not putting all the effort you can into your dreams. You're not doing as much as you know you can do. This is like a gut answer to a question that you need to ask yourself. Is there more that I can give here? Is there more that I can do in this area? Is there extra effort that I've got that I can apply to this? It's a gut answer. And sometimes your gut, your heart of hearts, your inner wisdom, that still small voice inside of you will be like, no, you're being a perfectionist. You're pushing too hard. You're inside of hustle culture. Like, no, you are doing the best you can right now. Sometimes that's the answer. And that's beautiful because mediocrity is not that you're giving all of the effort but getting okay results. Mediocrity to me is someone who's not giving effort and is okay with the fact that they're just okay. And y'all... This is, you have freedom in this world to be who and what you want to be. But I believe we are here to be a little bit better than we were yesterday. And the only way you can be a little bit better than you were yesterday is you have to care. And you have to have an honest conversation with yourself about where you are and who you are And why things aren't working the way they should. And where you're not putting in the effort that you should. And where you're not learning or evolving. It's just that gut. It's the gut answer. It's like, am I doing the best that I can? Sometimes the answer is yes. And for some of us, in different areas, the answer is no. And what we do that's so wild is that we will lean into the areas of our life where we're exceptional. We will lean into areas of our life where we are exceptional and we will allow that success to confuse us into believing that we are exceptional in all the ways. I don't think you need to be exceptional in every area of your life. But I think that if you are going to be in something, if you're going to be committed to it in in any way, a relationship, a job, a practice, a health journey, a home, parenting, whatever it is, I believe that you should give your whole heart. And if you can't give your whole heart to the area that you're putting energy into, you need to ask, should I even be in this realm? Should I even be in this place? Or yes, I should be in this place. I do want this. Okay, well, you're in it. Do your best. Our best is going to look different based on the day. But every freaking day, we can show up and try and try. My daughter is learning to sleep through the night without a (laughs) pull-up. Which, let's be honest, for my parents who understand, that means that just every morning I wash sheets. That's, that's just what it means right now. But we're at the place where she wants to try. And I'm so supportive of that. And we're trying all the things. <laughs> this is my fourth child that I've, you know, potty trained and like got to sleep through the night. So I know the tricks and we're doing the stuff. And every day it gets a little better, but we still are having accidents. And... This morning, she was like, oh, still didn't get it. And I was like, oh, yeah, babe, but you're gaining on it. 
you try. Like for her, it was that she didn't pee as much as she did the night before. She peed less. It was simple, but it was better than yesterday. I'm like, oh, sis, like all that matters is that you just keep getting a little bit better. She's trying her best. And that is to me the opposite of mediocrity. You can disagree. But I don't want to live a life that's just okay. I think that our birthright as humans is to carve our own version of what a beautiful life can be. And a beautiful life to me is anchored in the value of trying to become something better. If you encounter an area of your life that you feel like you've not been giving the effort you want to give, you have an area of your life that you know in your heart of hearts you need to commit more, but you're not sure how to do that. My favorite new hack is something I heard James Clear say in a keynote. And you guys have probably heard me talk about this lately because I keep referencing it. But he said, what's 1% better? Don't try and figure out how to 10x the place you're at. Just ask yourself, what's 1% better look like? What's 1% more time in this sauna? What's 1% more effort on this squat rack? What's 1% more effort in my business? What's 1% more effort in my relationship? When it's only 1%, it's so freaking small. It's so easy. It's the smallest little thing. And it's so achievable. But 1% better stacked on every single day. Maybe you don't even make all the days this year. Stacked on 300 days? What's that percentage? Everything in life is about compounding the stuff that's working. So don't ask how you can do it all, be it all, have it all. Think of one area in your life that you feel like you're not approaching with the intentionality that you want and ask, what's 1% more? I also think if you are going to expect this level of intentionality and commitment from yourself, you should expect it from the people in your inner circle. I think you should. I think we cannot choose our family, can't choose our family of origin, maybe can't change the fact that you've been friends with someone since elementary school and you'll be friends until you die and they kind of never really leveled up but you still love them you don't need to change that but you do need to be mindful that you can't continue to evolve and you can't continue to fly higher and higher if you only surround yourself with people who are at lower vibrations I think I told you guys I, I was listening to a, a sermon and the pastor said, pigeons cannot soar at the level of eagles. Different birds fly at different levels in the sky. And so if you feel like you keep starting to have the momentum that you want, starting to have the results that you want, starting to have a life that feels the way you want it to, and then you keep getting knocked off course, take a step back and ask yourself, what are you being exposed to? Friends, experiences, media, like what are you exposing yourself to that is pulling you out of the momentum that you have? Because it's gonna be really hard to push to be exceptional if everybody in your inner circle is okay with mediocrity. Mediocre will always try and drag you back down to mediocre with it. Mediocre doesn't want to be challenged by exceptional. Mediocre doesn't even want to see exceptional. Because when we're not putting full effort in and we see someone who is, 
we try and tear it down. It's kind of going back to our first thing that we talked about of yucking someone's yum. It's the same reason why you posted that you signed up for your first half marathon and just a random stranger in the comment section or your cousin Crystal started talking crap about how much she hates to run. She's yucking your yum from a place of her own insecurity. So if you want to push for more, you got to have at least one friend in your life who is also pushing for more or you will be shocked at how fast you get pulled back down to fly with the pigeons. The fourth thing that you should not put up with. The third was consistent mediocrity. The fourth is consistent monotony. Monotony, which don't worry, I've looked up the definition of this too because you guys know I love a definition. Monotony is a lack of variety or interest. Now in this instance, you'll notice I use the word consistent again because there are times where life can feel very monotonous, especially if you are a parent especially if you are getting your degree, especially if you are doing anything that requires the same habits, routines, rituals over and over and over as you work toward a goal or as you try and keep another human being alive. Like you're going to encounter the same stuff. And when you encounter the same stuff, it can feel, man, it could just start to feel really boring. I think that we often experience burnout not just because we're working so hard, but because there is no passion or joy in the things we are working on. I have four kids and it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot scheduling wise. It's a lot school wise. It's a lot activity wise, keeping everyone happy, having a teenager is very different than having a six-year-old, having a very dramatic, strong-willed girl is very different than my 16-year-old boy who's like studious and gets straight A's and wants to go to an Ivy League college. Like they are different creatures and every single one of them requires different energy from me. The way that I know how to show up the best for them is to stick to a routine. We do the same thing Monday through Friday, like same thing, get up at the same time, eat the same breakfast, same lunches for school, get out the door to school. Now it's time for round two. Now it's the teenager's turn. Let's get that going on. Get them out the door for school. Then I go into, now I'm going to do my workout. Now I'm going to, then I'm going to get ready. I'm going to come to like, it's down to the hour. I know exactly when the kids are going to get home from school. I know what snacks they're going to have. I figure out in advance what we're going to eat for dinner this week. Like as soon as dinner's done, then one of them has to go to baseball practice and it's almost going to be time for the other one to get in the bath and then it's bedtime. And then it is so monotonous. It's so monotonous. And I am going to be super honest and say, this is not my natural inclination. If I didn't have children, I think I probably would move every six months. I would be way more of a free spirit. I would probably not have a routine like this. I, I would just live a very different life. And I think when my kids are grown, I'll probably do that like I will be like let's go full hippie vibes let's just you know change it up and live in a Winnebago I don't know I don't know what I'm gonna do but I know that my natural state isn't this but this is how I know to keep everything flowing and to do it in a way that I think feels the best for me and feels good for my family and foundationally feels right but in the midst of that, it's pretty common for me to feel the monotony starts to get to me. I start to feel a sense of almost like burnout. I start to feel like 
is this, this is life. Like this is what, this is what we're just every day, the same thing, the same thing, the same thing. I don't know if you guys ever feel like this. I don't know if, you know, like we're never supposed to say that it's not perfect and happy and idyllic at all times to be a parent, but I definitely feel like that. And so I have to be really conscious of refusing to allow that to creep in or to catch it when it does. And the way that I circumnavigate that feeling or the way that I'm intentional about ensuring that that feeling doesn't happen is shaking things up, doing things differently. I don't do this with the kids routine, but I do it with my own. I cannot recommend enough The Artist Way by Julia Cameron. In that book, she talks about something called The Artist Date. And it is so genius. Even if you're not a creative-minded person, even if you're not, you don't see yourself as an artist, essentially the idea is that you once a week find time for yourself to go do something that sparks your curiosity, that you're really into. You're supposed to go by yourself and just take yourself on a date. So I've gone to art museums. I've walked around toy stores. I love to be outside in nature. I'll put on a podcast. I'll put on some music. I'll go change things up and work at a coffee shop. I'll work at a restaurant. I'll do things just to sort of feed myself so that I'm getting variation in the schedule. And I understand that there are personality types who might not need this. There are like, if you're an Enneagram 5, let's say, perhaps you don't need to have things change and be different. But for me, I I don't want to put up with monotony in my life. And the only reason the monotony would be there is if I accept it as it is. So I'm really conscious of making choices that, Like, just shake things up. This doesn't cost money. It could literally be as simple as you work from home and you always work at the dining room table and today you're going to go set up in a different room. You're going to go work on the back patio. You're going to go work on the balcony. You're just going to change things up so it feels different. When we do things in a different way or a different environment, it sparks ideas. It sparks creativity. It changes what's going on in our brain because our brain can't just go on autopilot when we're in a new environment. It has to pay attention because it's like, is this normal? Are we okay? Am I alive? That's really good for us. So I refuse to put up with consistent monotony and I think you should too. Lack of variety or interest. Your life should be interesting in a positive way. And there are things you can do to ensure that that happens. So do them. Number five, thing you should not put up with. This is another one that I feel like potentially could get pushed back, but I feel very strongly about this, so I'm going to say it. I don't think that you should accept physical ailments emotional distress. I don't think that you should accept being anything less than optimum health for your body. Different bodies, different ways of being, different ways of functioning. If you're 85, you're going to have different optimum health than if you're 17. But in this country especially, we have come to accept that being sick is normal. I am kind of blown away. No, I'm not even kind of blown away. I am blown away as a mom and watching my kids get older at how often dentists, doctors, like how often medical professionals will try and prescribe medication give them surgery, suggest things that they don't need, like just in case. Some examples. My daughter has big tonsils. 
I had big tonsils. In fact, not only do I have big tonsils, but my whole childhood, I got tonsillitis all the time. And the doctor would always tell my parents, she will eventually grow out of this. She will grow out of it. She'll grow out of it. It was really bad when I was little and probably should have had them out. But he was right. I grew out of it. And then it didn't happen ever again. My daughter has never had tonsillitis. She just has big tonsils. And like, it's never been a problem. Doesn't affect her breathing. Doesn't affect, no, nothing, nothing wrong. But a doctor looked in her throat during a physical, which I am required to get them physicals for school or summer camp or whatever, fine. But at this physical, the doctor looked at her tonsils and was like, oh, her tonsils are huge. We should take them out. What? She was four at the time. The doctor suggested that I put my four-year-old daughter through surgery for literally no reason just because it might be helpful. Y'all, that's crazy. That is crazy. Um, I had this happen. My 16-year-old went to the dentist and they were like, oh, we should take his wisdom teeth out. I'm like, oh, are they impacted? Is Is there something wrong? They're like, no, I mean, he's 16. Like, we should just take his wisdom teeth out. Why would I put my children into surgery when they don't need it? We live in a country that has normalized being sick or normalized taking pills or normalized having procedures done that we don't need. Now, look, I had my boobies done. I didn't need that. I mean, I needed that emotionally because they were flat as pancakes after breastfeeding. That was a choice that I made as an adult. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about things that we are made to believe are illnesses when they're not. We're treating things that don't need to be treated. And then the flip side of that becomes that we think it's normal to be sick. We think it's normal to have pain in our body and we accept the pain in our body. We accept the sickness. We accept these things because we're like, well, that's everybody. The amount of pain meds like Tylenol, ibuprofen that I used to take years ago because I had headaches or because I had back pain or because I had different stuff going on in my body, I never asked what the root cause of that pain was. I never asked. Nobody had taught me that. I didn't know, oh, well, you have headaches because of this, this, and this, none of which have anything to do with the ibuprofen you keep taking, but the ibuprofen would mute the feeling that I was having, so I would never solve the root cause. If you refuse to accept that your body shouldn't be in optimum health if you're like no I demand of myself to all that I am capable of doing that I will take care of my health if you demand that of yourself it will require you to figure a lot of shit out it takes way longer it's way harder it's a lot of research, a lot of discovery, a lot of arming yourself with information. It would be easy to say, oh yeah, it's more expensive, but I actually don't think the more I learn about taking care of my health, the less I believe it's about buying more stuff. It's not about buying the right supplement or going to a doctor or seeing the thing. It's about paying attention, slowing down, getting enough water, getting the right nutrition inside of you, getting enough sleep, managing your stress better. There are things that we can do that will allow us to get closer to the best health that we are capable of getting to for our body, but it's just not fast. It's not fast, it's not quick, it's not easy. But it's the best life that you can live. And it kind of goes back to that question of mediocrity. Why would you want to allow your body to be less than it can be? And man, I am not talking about the way your body looks. I don't freaking care how your body looks. 
I care that you have the energy that you need. I care that you're able to move with full motion, as much motion as you're capable, as your body is capable of getting, that you have that, that your joints are working correctly, that you can get up and down out of a chair easily, that you can walk or run, that you can experience, you can go on the dance floor at your best friend's wedding and dance all night, like you can keep up with your kids, you can do things where you feel good. I have a friend who gets migraines all the time. Like once a month, she gets migraines. And every single month when she gets a migraine, she takes a migraine pill. And no matter how much I talk to her about it, she never goes to try and figure out why she's getting the migraines. That's not normal. Your body is telling you something's wrong. I'm reading a book right now about the body and energy sources in the body. And there is this line she says that I love. She said... Your biography becomes your biology. It's Carolyn Miss. Your biography becomes your biology. Every single thing you've ever gone through is in your body right now. It's in your DNA. It's in your hair. It's in your skin. It's, it's in you. Unless you have actively worked to get those things out, to pull that trauma out, to work it through, it's showing up in your lower back pain. It's showing up in your headaches. It's showing up in your upset stomach, in your IBS. It's showing up in your skin. Most of our physical ailments, if not all of our physical ailments, are connected to something emotional in us. So when you accept, oh, I just am always going to be in pain. I'm always going to be inflamed. I'm always going to feel this way. It's just a hundred percent untrue you don't have to live like that but it's also you accepting less than your worth you're worth feeling good you're worth it your family's worth it the people you love and are that you're trying to take care of they deserve you at your best and it takes forever i'm not gonna lie Trying to balance my hormones over the last three years, it's still a process. And there are days where I'm like, oh my word, like how are we still, but I feel a million times better than I did three years ago. So I'm going to keep dialing it in. I'm going to keep tweaking it. I'm going to keep seeing, okay, half a, another spoonful of this seed or a little bit more of this oil or okay, I've got to take more chase tree berry. I've got to do this thing. I've got to get more sleep. I've got... Because I want to live in optimum health. And I'm not there. But you better believe that anything that's showing up in my body, I am actively working to make better. And not because I'm treating it or numbing it in the moment, but because I'm trying to figure out why it's there in the first place so that I can be done with it forever. Last thing that you should never put up with. Someone that you care about missing or sabotaging something that's important to you. Someone that you care about missing or sabotaging something that's important to you. This is one of those things that like someone does this once Shame on them. Someone does this twice. Shame on you. This happens a lot. It happens a lot in romantic relationships. It happens a lot in relationships where the you are in relationship with someone who's a narcissist and you don't know it, whether that's a parent, a romantic partner, a friend, a boss, where you have, you know, made dinner plans to go out with your girlfriends. And you have reminded your partner several times, hey, just a reminder, it's Becky's birthday, going out on Thursday night, you said you were going to stay with the kids, they're like, yeah, yeah, I got it, I got it. And you keep reminding them, and then the day shows up, and you're, you, you know, great, they come home, everything's great, and then they text you every five minutes, they're calling, when are you going to be home, where are the pajamas, where's the diaper, he won't eat the food that you put out, 
they're sabotaging your experience. I see this happen a lot when women would come to a RISE conference because it would be three days where they would be working on themselves. And this would cause all kinds of a shit show in their relationship. And then they'd have a partner back home who was consistently sabotaging and maybe she wouldn't even be able to see that that's what they were doing and maybe the partner wasn't even able to see what they were doing but the partner would suddenly get sick the partner would suddenly have all kinds of problems the partner would suddenly go through some big life crisis and she would be required to either leave the experience that she was so excited about or she was checking in on that person so much and dealing with so much of their drama that she never actually got to be present and do the work that she wanted to do. You know, it's you doing your first big presentation and you're so excited and that's the day that your partner just happened to plan a trip with the boys or your sister like has a huge crisis on a day that was supposed to be important or someone comes to your birthday party and has a full meltdown and a full like freak out because of some drama in their life and like ruins your birthday. I have a friend, I have a friend who broke up with their partner. (laughs) It was a long-term relationship, broke up with their partner and on their birthday, The ex-partner calls and it was the first time they had talked in a while and the friend's like, oh, this is actually really nice. Like they were together for a very long time. We're friends still and it's very nice that they called. And then before they got off the phone, the ex made sure to tell them that they were dating someone new. Like, oh, are you dating anyone? And my friend was like, no. And they were like, oh, I am. And he's amazing. And like, da, 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 da. And like, we're so compatible and all this stuff. On his birthday, this person called and did this. Y'all, this is some red flag stuff. Why do we, we're just like, oh, this person's crazy. Or like, no, 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 no. This is not Okay. And I think we all have our version of this. We've all seen some version of this in our life. And if you haven't, amazing. But if you do encounter this, let an alarm go off in your head. Stuff happens. Of course, stuff happens. And maybe there are freak incidences where (laughs) your friend, your partner, your mama, your sister, your kid, like whatever, where something happened and it did throw off what you were trying to do or experience or have, but it was just a freak thing. It, it wasn't a, a normalized thing. What I'm talking about are the people in our lives that if you take a step back, you're like, why does Kevin always do this when it's my thing? Why does my big sister always do this when it's my turn? Why, why? It's just something to be hyper aware of. And in my opinion, confronting the people that do this, not great, not great. (laughs) Because if someone is actively trying to sabotage your stuff, even if it's subconscious for them, they're not going to be aware of it and they're not going to admit to it. So for me, I don't even want to confront the issue I just want to be conscious of it because I don't really want that person in my life. And I have family members who do this. And I just, you know, I love them, love them from afar, send them a holiday card, like do what I need to do. But they're not in the inner circle. They're not someone who's going to be allowed to be closer to me because that is a kind of selfishness that, to me, feels very toxic. In my experience, when people have that desire, when they have that inclination to kind of mess up someone else's thing, whether it's conscious or not, it's a very unhealthy ego. And I try my hardest to not have those in my life. So just some things to think about as you go through this day and this week and this life. I hope that maybe something I said gave you a little kernel of something, whether it was talking about your period or talking about trying harder. (laughs) 
If there was something in this episode that you found helpful, please consider subscribing to the podcast so you never miss an episode. We're posting all kinds of great content. Don't want you to miss it. And consider sharing with a friend. This show is totally free, will always be free to everyone who listens all over the world. And the one thing that you can do to help us out and support our team is to just share it. Share it with your mom or your sister, put it on your social media. So grateful for this community. I will be back soon with more information. And until then, remember, I love you and I'm rooting for you. We're doing a vlog. Uh, 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 uh,